Wow. Y'all, she was worried about that. It was awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry I outed you, Lisa. Before worship, Lisa and I, she was in here, you know, rehearsing, and we were getting ready for worship. We always do a tech run-through so we can make sure all the slides are in order and all the, if there's something during the sermon, it all works right. So we were doing the tech rehearsal, go, reviewing the words to the hymns and everything. I mean, we look at everything because we want to bring you the best experience possible. So after we had done that rehearsal, Lisa came to me and she brought the little piece of paper that I give to all of the worship participants that has the outline of what we're going to do. And on there, it said that the scripture was Luke 9, 1 to 10. But in your bulletin, it says Luke 19, 1 to 10. And Lisa brought the paper to me and she was like, and I said, well, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. And, you know, I was blaming Suzette. <laughs> And then Suzette's our office administrator, y'all. She gets the bulletin ready for you. She does a great job, doesn't she? So then I decided I needed to find the place in my Bible before worship today. And guess what the scripture is? Luke 19, 1 to 10. So I was wrong. I made a typing error. And that means that our texts up in the booth have the wrong scripture slides. So y'all don't show those because it's not Luke 9. That's wrong. It's Luke 19, 1 to 10. So I apologize. If you like to read the scripture along with me, you're going to have to grab a Bible and open it up because it's not going to be on the screen. It's the story that we are most of us familiar with, I think, the story of Zacchaeus. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a Oh, look at that. Good job, guys. He was trying to, uh, sorry, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, they were fast up there, weren't they? That's why we pay them the big bucks. No, we don't. Will you pray with me and for me? Oh God, here we are again before you. Come to us, breathe in us, reveal to us who you are. And may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of every heart be pleasing to you, O oh God, our Savior and our strength. Amen. Well, as we've talked about this morning, we're beginning a new series based on the movie Jesus Revolution. Now, many of us gathered here on Friday night, I think there were about 30, to watch it. If you were here or have seen the movie, will you raise your hand? Just give me an idea of who has seen the movie. So, yeah, thank you very much. Some people went to see it was in the movie theaters. It came out in, last year in 2022. It's 2023 right now. Yeah. Okay. Came out last year in 20. I just had a brain glitch, you know, for a second. I actually wrote in my notes that it's July 2003. So um, I don't. I don't even know what year I'm in. But uh, I really highly recommend the movie. If you haven't seen it, if you like to watch movies, uh, it's a very well made movie. It's very professional. Sometimes, you know, Jesus movies are are not you know, as high quality as the super people movies, but this one is really, really done. 
So we're, we're going to show, I said it in the announcements, but if you didn't catch it and you're watching us online, we're going to watch a clip from this movie that's almost three minutes long. And what has happened in the past when we try to show a movie, because we do not have the legal rights to show a movie, we don't own it. We can show it in the sanctuary, but we cannot stream it. That's a whole other realm of copyright. And, and it, we couldn't get permission to do that even if we tried. So we'll put up a slide for you. We don't, our feed will crash if we try to show the movie because all the software systems on social media recognize that what we're doing. So we're gonna put up a slide that's bl blank or it may say, hang with us, we're, just don't go away, we'll be back. I wish we had a legal way around this, but we really don't. So uh, today we're highlighting what is one of the primary themes of this movie which is everyone is looking for God. Everyone is looking for God. Many of us are familiar with that story that we read, the story of Zacchaeus. Even if we haven't heard it or read it before, as children, maybe we learned that song, you know, about the wee little man climbing up in the sycamore tree. There are a number of interesting things about this story that we don't really have time to dive into today, but, you know, every scripture has a dozen sermons in it at least. I wonder things like how many people must have been there lining the streets waiting for Jesus to come nearby, to pass by them. You know, we had the parade of the 4th of July, and uh, I think people mostly had room to spread out. We weren't like six deep like at the Macy's Thanksgiving parade where people have to buy tickets to sit on risers if they really want to see. Or maybe, you know, sit on their, their dad's shoulders or something. Um, that's, that's what I think of. How, how short was Zacchaeus anyway? Like, I mean, the song says he was a wee man. Uh, did he maybe just want to get a bird's eye view of, of, you know, maybe he was a short person. There were little people in Jesus' time, but maybe he just wanted a different perspective than he normally saw. Or did, you, did Zacchaeus feel unworthy, you know, to stand even with Jesus, face to face with him? And, and what were his plans before Jesus invited him, you know, himself to dinner? Was Zacchaeus thinking, wow, I really want to meet this guy? Or was he just curious? What, had he heard about the Lord's teaching before? Had he kind of followed him before? Had he, had he heard him speak? Had he already made a decision that he, he recognized that he had taken from others and he was he wanted to repent from that. He wanted to change. Maybe his conscience had been talking to him a little bit. If, if it was a spontaneous decision, what does that say about the power that emanated from Jesus? You know, that people just instantaneously recognized who they were as they stood before him. What did Jesus do to call out such a confession from Zacchaeus? But, but my question for today is more about Zacchaeus' motivation for wanting to see Jesus at all. Luke says he was trying to see who Jesus was. That's the NRSV translation. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was. It didn't sound like he knew him already. The King James translation says Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus. He sought to see him. The Greek word zeteo. It means sought or wanted to. He wanted to. So Zacchaeus wasn't simply curious. He went to some trouble, you know, to be able to see Jesus. Obviously, I mean, it seems like trouble to me to climb a tree wearing a dress and sandals. I would not choose to do that today. When I've sung that song about uh, Zacchaeus, the wee little man, you know, I've always looked way up in the tree, exaggeratedly. When I get to that part where Jesus hauled... Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. But, you know, the sycamore tree probably wasn't that high. <laughs> Zacchaeus probably didn't have to climb up very far in it to see Jesus. I wonder, you know, how high. He was just a little bit above Jesus when Jesus looked up and said, What are you doing up there, Zacchaeus? Come down here and talk to me. The point is that Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus, right? He was, he was searching he was trying to see him. Or at least he was looking for something. He was, he knew there was something he needed to know. 
Luke makes it sound like Zacchaeus really didn't know too much about Jesus at all. But there was something stirring in Zacchaeus' spirit. Something was telling him that there is more to life than money. Perhaps he was lonely. I dare say tax collectors probably didn't have a lot of friends, you know, uh, because other Jewish people and, uh, viewed the tax collectors as betrayers. They had turned their backs on the, their own people in collusion with the Roman government. That, that was the perspective. And many of them, as Zacchaeus demonstrates, were thieves of a sort. They didn't sneak into houses and steal money from people, but they paid themselves a salary by taking more money than the taxes that were owed. So rather than people going to pay their taxes at a central place or writing a check to the government like we do or paying online like probably most of us do, um, to pay the taxes we owe, the tax collectors would go around and they would, they would collect the taxes, but they would collect more because, hey, they needed, that they, was their job, they needed a salary. And sometimes they would take an excessive amount more than the taxes that were owed. And uh, it's kind of like, well, I think of payday lenders today, you know, who charge exorbitant interest rates to people who they know will not be able to pay them in good time. Anyway, something is burning in Zacchaeus' soul. How long it has been there, we do not know. Zacchaeus doesn't know that he is looking for salvation. And neither apparently do the hippies. But the Lord does. And he calls Zacchaeus out of a tree. St. Augustine famously wrote in his confessions, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Augustine writes that he wants to both praise God and to know God, but he can't figure out which one is the most important part. Either way, we were made by God in the image of God. In the beginning, God breathed breath into us. The life that we have the breath of the Holy Spirit, whose name means, literally means breath, continues to breathe in us today. It is literally God's breath in our lungs. We long for God, as Zacchaeus did, because God made us that way. I have called you by name, God says in Isaiah. Psalm 139 teaches us that God knows our inmost being. Before there was breath in our lungs, God shaped and formed us in our mother's womb. Jeremiah 31, I have loved you with an everlasting love. John 3, see what love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we are called children of God. Romans 5, 8, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. Lonnie Frisbee argues that the hippies are looking for God, that they too have God's love built inside of them, just as all humanity does. They long for peace and justice for all, just as Judaism and Jesus continues to teach us today. They were looking for peace and love, but they were looking for it in all the wrong places. The hippies, they, they weren't the only ones looking for God. So are we all. At times we know that we are living in God. We experience moments of, of, of high, spiritual highs, mountaintop experiences, we call them. Or we, we have feel-good, you know, heartwarming episodes, like when we finished watching the movie here on Friday night. I don't think it's a stretch to say that we all realized that we had heard a good message, possibly a message from God after viewing the movie. We recognized a deep, resounding truth in the message that we, that we heard. 
And we said, we said to one another, we need a new revolution today. I couldn't agree more. Do you not think that we have a generation of people in the world longing to know God? They just don't know. They don't even know who God is. But the revolution has to start in us. We must rekindle in ourselves that longing for God that we have felt in the past, that we have known. We have many practices and habits that we can discard <laughs> that perhaps are not helpful to us. Ways that we ourselves are trying to fill that longing for God that, that we try to fill with other stuff. Some of them we recognize, we know we shouldn't be doing them. Others we may not recognize. We may drink alcohol to escape our feelings or overeat or shop or view pornography, watch television for hours, read all the news that we can consume. We play games on the computer maybe or spend hours at a time on social media. We may find our comfort in attitudes that we know are not in keeping with God's will for us. Like deciding, you know, that we're better than, than another group of people or even another person. Or we attempt to marginalize folks because that makes us more comfortable. Whether or not we recognize our form of escape it qualifies if doing that thing, if we're doing that thing to the exclusion of the other uses of our time that we could be using for the benefit of God or God's people. Time that we could be spending in prayer or study, worship. If we are doing that, if we are staying in tune with God, if our lives are founded in prayer and and the word, then we know it's okay to have habits. It's okay to have hobbies. It's okay to play pickleball and, you know, spend time with friends. But if we're ignoring that relationship that we have with God, I promise that what we're doing is trying to fill up an empty space that nothing else can fill. No one is perfect, and that's, you know, that's not the point. The point is that if we continue to be unhappy or anxious or feel empty or behave in ways that are unloving or harmful to anyone or to ourselves, we, we are quite possibly filling our lives up with garbage instead of with God. We are yearning for God and God is right there waiting for us. Revelation 320, God is speaking to the lukewarm church in Laodicea, who have lost their fervor for God. They're neither hot nor cold. God says to them, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Friends, Jesus is knock, knock, knocking on our hearts. Open the door. Open the door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.